What if I told you that there's a secret movement technique that the top 1% of players are using? A technique so simple, yet when used can be so powerful. With the click of only 4 buttons, you can move faster, more efficient, become harder to hit, and develop your existing skills into the skills needed to become a movement legend. Skills that look a little something like this. Pathfinder one shot. There one HP. We're left 20. What's going on everybody, District here, and today's video is sponsored by Cool My Rig. Cool My Rig is a new and unique gaming company whose goal is to be giving away custom build beasts of the PC. Let's be real, their PCs would easily crush my setup. The owner Nick is a gamer himself who started his own company building and giving away PCs to gamers all across the USA. To enter Cool My Rig's giveaways, simply head over to their website, check out the variety of t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, and PC cooling parts, and every single dollar that you spend gives you one entry into winning the PC giveaway. So if you spend $10, that's 10 entries to win that PC. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check them out yourself. Now, let's hop into today's video. Alright, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to be talking about a different variation of sliding to help you be moving as fast as possible. A lot of people call this fade sliding. I call this instant sliding because fade isn't the person who created it. He's just one of the many people who utilize it the most. Now, essentially what this mechanic is helping us do is reposition faster. It's helping us get from point A to point B significantly faster. It's helping us keep our momentum. It's helping us lead into other movement mechanics. This mechanic is gonna help us essentially just keep moving as fast as possible. Now, this is actually something that I teach a lot when I do private coaching sessions. If you haven't seen any of my previous coaching sessions, you can go check it out with the link that's popping up right now, top right corner of the screen. I am a private freelance coach. And one of the main things that I talk about in the beginning of every one of my coaching sessions is this mechanic right here, because this is really what is making and breaking a lot of gunfights. This is just the bee's knees when it comes to, you know, movement mechanics. A way that we can kind of think about, you know, improving at Apex isn't so much that you're doing one thing that is making and breaking all of your fights. Instead, it's a series of little things that when stacked together give you a much greater chance at winning those gunfights. Another way that you can really think about this is a weightlifter, right? Adding five pounds to your weight isn't going to make you a stronger person. But if you can slowly add another five pounds, another five pounds, another five pounds, the more weight that you add over time, the stronger that you're going to get. And this is the same concept when it comes to Apex or playing any other sport, right? You're adding new skills, even though they're little skills, you're adding new skills daily and as often as possible to make yourself as strong as a player as possible. So this is what this mechanic is. It's just another thing to add on to your gameplay to make you a faster moving, harder to hit, more aggressive player. Now, what a lot of people know is that holstering your weapon is going to give you slightly faster movement speed. This is something that everybody is taught at the very I beginning as soon as they start playing Apex. What a lot of people don't realize is that there's a lot of other mechanics that are affected by simply holstering our gun. And this is essentially what we're going to be going over today, is that holstering our gun is going to give us many more benefits than just running around faster. For example, not too many people know this, but if your gun's in your hand and you want to slide, you have to take a minimum of three footsteps. On Wraith, this is gonna look a little bit faster compared to if we were to do this on someone like Gibraltar, whose running animation is slightly different, but essentially the cadence or the timing that this is gonna be is one, two, three, slide. Anything shorter than this, one, two. You're gonna get a crouch or a dead slide. One, dead slide, one, two, one, two, three. Now, as soon as we holster our weapon, we're going to completely remove all of those extra steps. As long as you're sprinting and you've taken one step for momentum, you're going to now be able to slide. One. Versus if our gun were to be up. One, one, two, one, two, three. Gun down, one. So right away, you can already see that now we're starting to get a little bit of faster movement speed. Now we're starting to implement slides slightly sooner. And this might not seem like a really big deal, but when it comes down into a 1v1, this is massive. I'm taking shots. 
Especially in a game like Apex where things happen so fast that if you can cut down just a couple extra seconds, you can really change how a gunfight is going to be played out. Now, for example, let's say that I was taking a 1v1 off of this box right here and we had an enemy right over way. here. If I were to try and come around this corner and slide into them, I may get caught with a dead slide, right? Maybe I don't take that full three step, one, two. Right here, now I'm you know stuck in the open and whoever I'm fighting against can quickly come out of cover, shoot me, and then push up onto me. As opposed to, if we were to holster our weapon, what we're now able to do is come out of the corner, already sliding, already shooting our gun. As opposed to one, two, three, being only able to shoot at the very end of our slide jump right here. Another issue that I actually didn't even mention is that when you're running with your gun up, you cannot shoot while sprinting for example right you can shoot while you're walking but as soon as you start sprinting when you go to shoot it's going to completely cut down your sprint into a walk now this is a big issue right because now you can't be full speed while shooting at people we'll go over ways that we can get around this in a different video or possibly even later in this video but for now we're going to stick solely to sliding so Coming back to what we were just talking about, if I'm taking a gunfight with this person here, and I'm you know, gonna be engaging this person with my gun up, there's gonna be a handful of issues or a handful of side effects that come with this. First being, I can't sprint and shoot. So essentially shooting has now been completely lifted off the table until I've entered a slide jump. On top of that, I'm going to be running slightly slower because my gun is in my hand. On top of this, if I misstep or if I, if I for whatever reason, mistie my slide jump and I hit two steps or if I hit one step, now I'm going to be caught in the open and I'm going to have to start all the way over from scratch again. So if I'm here and I go one, two, dead slide, now I have to go one, two, three. Now at this point, you've already been caught in the open and this person may have already started shooting at you and you have just lost the fight before you even made your first play. And on top of that, the fourth big issue that's coming with simply sliding around with your gun up or, or leading into a slide with your gun in your hand is that if you get shot, it's going to cancel your sprint and you have to be sprinting to slide jump or to slide in general. So if I'm here and I'm running one, two, I get shot. It's going to cancel my sprint and now I have to go one, two all over again. So the more that you get shot with your gun up, the more that you're going to be caught in the open, the more that you're going to be stuck there like a stale fish. I don't even know what that means, but we're, we'll, we'll go with it. If my gun is put away, we are going to basically remove all of those issues. Now I can run slightly faster. I can slide coming out of cover with one step as opposed to three steps. If someone were to shoot me, yes, it's still going to cancel my sprint, but I don't have to take a full three steps all over again. I'm running, I get shot, one step, and I'm back into that slide. And on top of that, because we are not having to take those full three steps where we can't shoot because we're sprinting, because we only have to take one step, it's going to allow me to shoot so much sooner. As you can see here, we'll kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison. It's not that much faster, but it can make and break a gunfight. Essentially, what we're going to be doing here with this whole movement technique is using this movement tech and leading into gunfights. So we're never gonna really start a gunfight by sliding into the open and then playing from the open, right? That's not our goal. Our goal isn't, I'm gonna just restart this guy. Our goal instead is to be playing from cover. So basically what we're gonna be focusing really hard on, right, is making sure that we're playing as tight to cover as possible coming out dealing damage and off this damage instead of having our gun up and going one two three slide into the open instead what we're going to do is putting away our weapon so that we can get an instant slide off of that cover and push up much more aggressively instead of sliding and then taking out our weapon sliding and taking out our weapon right instead of doing this what we're going to do is actually reverse those button inputs we're actually going to take out our weapon and then slide you see right here right if i slide take out my weapon i can only shoot my gun at the very end of my slide jump but if i take out my gun first and then immediately input a slide now take a look at actually the controller input thingamabobber at the bottom right corner of the screen 
My swap weapon is actually on my analog stick, which is mapped to one of my paddles. So if I take out my gun and then slide jump, you see how my gun comes out significantly sooner? Swap weapon, slide jump. I'm shooting my gun at the top of my slide jump, at the parabola of my slide jump, as opposed to slide out and then take out my gun. I'm only able to shoot my gun at the bottom of my slide jump as I'm coming back into the ground. This takes away from how much damage we're able to put in and how soon we can start putting in damage. So if I'm coming off of cover here, right? We essentially ended up going from one, two, three, slide jump, shooting our gun, and then turn that into our guns up, holster, unholster, slide jump, and pushing up right away. I'll do that without ADSing, because whenever I ADS, it like really zooms in and kind of makes everything look weird. All right, so I'm here, I'm putting in damage, putting in damage, one, two, three, slide. As opposed to, I'm putting in damage, putting in damage, he's broken or close to being broken, holster, unholster, slide, coming around that corner already shooting. This in a 1v1, right, is very, very powerful. If somebody's behind this corner right here, right, especially if you're playing on PC where you can implement a tap strafe or you, you can implement other advanced movement mechanics that, you know, it's very tough on console controller. Now, kind of going back to things that we can do to add on to this, things that we can also do as we unholster in one step, right, we can tap strafe back into this wall here. It's actually really difficult in third person mode, right? And we can use that instant slide to quickly come out, tap strafe in, wall bounce off and put ourselves on top of our target as well right we can use this to quickly slide out and come back in now being a coach i could literally talk about how we could start implementing this mechanic into gunfights and overall how we can really use this mechanic all day long so if that's something that you're interested in leave a like leave a comment and we'll make a part two if you enjoyed this video and you found this very useful make sure to like and subscribe we have a lot more content coming on the way and if you're ever interested in getting one-on-one -on -one coaching with me personally you can always click the link in the description down below i have a wide variety of different sessions that you can choose from like gameplay review custom 1v1s advanced fundamentals basic fundamentals, advanced movement mechanics, basic movement mechanics, and if you have a team that you want to play with and get better with, we have duos and trios training sessions, which by the way are always going to be a little bit more discounted than a regular session by yourself. With that being said, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.